I grew up in the northern part of Israel in a small village, Mushav, family of farmers, poultry and uh, apples. And you know, my family was exposed to weather because weather is a big factor for everything related to agriculture. When I was 18, I joined the military like everyone else in, in Israel uh, and uh, joined the Air Force Academy. After a year and a half over there, I did my bachelor degree in uh, Ben Gurion University. I studied uh, economics, uh, that was my bachelor. And I have to say that even though uh, I went there when I was about 19, even later on when I went to Harvard Business School, the fundamentals I got from Ben Gurion were very uh, solid and, and uh, took it with me. Everything I learned during that time over there is extremely useful for me today even. My service in the Air Force uh, taught me a lot about the challenges related to climate volatility, weather volatility as a result of climate change in the cockpit level. Data is changing all the time. And I was just shocked how manual the process is. Personally, I had several missions that I had to abort uh, due to weather-related challenges. Unfortunately, um, uh, colleagues died in weather-related accidents and that is what made me very passionate about weather. And eventually, uh, when I finished my service and moved to Boston, uh, I decided to start uh, Tomorrow.io. The slogan of our company is take control of tomorrow today. Weather events, the patterns we're seeing, are just becoming more frequent and more volatile in any given year. We're gonna have more wildfires in the West Coast, more flood events in the East Coast, more hurricanes in every hurricane season. What we're trying to do is to help countries and businesses put systems in place and adapt to that. The way we serve our customers is by providing them our software product. Five billion people live outside of radar coverage. So five billion people in the world do not have reliable flood alerts. Additionally, oceans and the seas are not covered with radar. This is a huge problem. When we tried to look at how do we bridge that gap, we realized that you cannot do it from the ground up. Then we realized we have to go to space. We're going to launch about 30 satellites, uh, and uh, those satellites will be uh, in low orbit. That will provide close to real-time monitoring for every point on Earth. And the result of that will be that we will improve significantly weather forecasting globally, we will improve hurricane, cyclone, typhoons forecasting skills, and we'll create a real revolution when it comes to climate science. We work with airlines like Delta, United, JetBlue, we work with sports organizations like the NFL and the US Open Tennis. We work with supply chain companies. We work with utilities. Uh, we work with NASA, with NOAA, with the US Air Force. We really try to help the agencies. We're not trying to replace governments, we're trying to augment. And the analogy we really like using in that context is the SpaceX analogy. When you go to Ben Gurion through the Air Force, uh, you really have a different experience than what the normal student may have. It's very military, but when you go to class, suddenly you're completely civilian. You get to meet the Ben Gurion professors. I had really great faculty. My biggest takeaway from my time at Ben Gurion University is really where my passion is, where my heart is. In the first opportunity I had, I just went after it. And, and started chasing my, my dream. Together, we can truly be partners in the remarkable.